My heart's falling cold Cause my hands they let go I turn away my eyes To try and find what's mine Okay, so okay, I've, you know, everyone had already mentioned I right, do a lot of communication and confidence strategies. And you've already said how you met with Paul, but how was working together? You know, you, you've obviously, you already said you had a different mindset totally. So mm -hmm. he was more optimistic about it. You were more reluctant about it. So yeah. what, how did you work together? And the question, the follow-up question is, what advice would you give to people that are immigrants or people that, you know, immigrant creatives, musicians or whatever that want to collaborate with other people, you yeah. know, how, how should they navigate that process? Well, one, like, you're right, Paul was, he, in, in a way, it was the, the strategy kind of, and this was not anything planned, it just happened like that, became a sort of good cop, bad cop relationship or team that we kind of created. So he was always come on, come on to me, because, you know, we've got to go and see the record company or the publisher. And I was not sure. So I, you know, leaned back and sort of, I even remember when he met my mum before everything, you know, a couple of times he met my My mum used to look at Paul with this sort of like suspicion in her eye. <laughs> like, like, this is the guy that's trying to lead my son astray. <laughs> and even Paul recognised it, because he always tells that story. <laughs> He's like, oh, Tunde's <laughs> mom looking at me like, oh, who's this <laughs> kind of thing. So, but the thing was, we, that good cop, bad cop thing, I, I can tell you, like, there were a lot of times we'd go to, say we come down to London, go into a, I don't know, I remember once we went into Island Records. And the a &R guy, he'd That's said, Bob Marley's, Bob Marley's, yeah, Record label, record label yeah. Yeah. yeah, and the air guy at the time because we were talking, Oh, I want to sign you guys, this, that, and the other. And Paul had dragged me, you know, down to London, obviously, reluctantly. I was like, No, nah, I'm not sure. Nah. And he said, Come to me, we're good. So we get there, and then the guy goes, He says, Oh, yeah, this is great, I love this song. He says, And he says, Listen, we've got a studio down here in the basement, we're gonna lock you up in there. You guys just take your time, do whatever you want, take as much time as you like, just be creative and stuff. He says, but what I want to know is like, how many of these songs, of, like Ocean Drive, how many Ocean Drives can you write in a week? <laughs> this is what he said. And I just thought that was such a stupid, strange thing for an airman, an r man who was supposed to really understand that creativity doesn't, you just don't turn it on don't and switch off. the light on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it just kind of really cheesed me off. And I remember just leaving. I just, ah, we just left. And Paul was really upset with the guy. He was like, you see, I've told you, don't be talking, don't be saying things like that to him. Because I'll be honest with you, he doesn't even want to do this. He doesn't even want to be here in the first place. So you've got to be very careful what <laughs> you <the> say. <laughs> and no, this he was, was saying this to the end of yeah, our guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. This was a recurring theme. And one time we went to this publisher as well, Rondo, Rondo Records they were called similar sort of thing somebody said something i just went i just thought man uh, when because we would get out and i'd say to us you see i told you what what this is a waste, <laughs> it's not it's a waste of my time but mate honestly it's a waste of your time as well don't you ever say that to him because he doesn't even want to do it i'm having to i'm walking <laughs> <on> <laughs> eggshells around him just to make sure that he comes down here so but it worked in our favor you know it worked in our favor and but in our working relationship, it's, it's been like that. Paul, he can still be a bit like that, you know. He's actually quite, you know, and I'm a bit more laid back. So you know, when you're in the sort of like, it's a bit like having. I always say he's the brother that I. I've got two sisters. Yeah. I've never had my siblings are girls. I've never had a, a brother, but with Paul, it's, he's like that brother that I never had. You know, there's always yeah. sometimes a brother. Yeah. Brother no, that, like you got that, to do yeah, this. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, kind of. But sometimes they annoy you, and sometimes you're like. Oh yeah, I can. I, yes, like, I agree with that. You know, like that. Yeah, you, you understand. Well, I don't about. know what she's talking about. And so, and that's always been the case. So, but I would say, you know, in any sort of relationship like that, because you did ask, you said, you know, yes, well, how? like anybody else that's. Like yeah, other. especially, you know, I mean, this is called diaspora. I just said a lot of us, a lot of yeah. immigrants are coming from diaspora. Obviously, you know, you've worked. Yes. You know. The thing to what I would say is always always um, 
it's a good thing to understand and know that you would always you will achieve a lot more if you're prepared to work with other people have that sort of collaborative spirit okay be open to well, have an open mind together. yeah have an yeah. open mind don't think you can do it all yourself because trust me the more the moment you start collaborating with people there's a lot more that you can achieve it's almost a bit like like putting more than one brain together you know right your creative output can be greater i mean now with that can also come the sort of friction yes that that, that, that happens you know and sometimes you read all these stories you know people you, i don't want to mention any names but you read stories of some of these nigerian artists they're always fighting and beating each other and stuff like that um there's always going to be creative differences so how but, do you resolve that well because you just well we have good management to start off with okay. so always make sure you get good management so a good thought a really good yeah. manager looks after yeah. everybody involved yeah. and they make sure that they're sort of that balancing force in the middle okay yeah. so they're looking after the the, the bigger team. picture yeah the yeah. team and so they can iron out a lot of those creases sometimes that can come up between individual strong headed people or not so strong headed people or whatever okay so that's good make sure you have a good manager but also just always remember if you think about it it's like there's always there's that saying that says you know sometimes when you think about some people will look at uh, uh, something for instance that's successful and what they do is they look and they think oh what made this thing successful so for instance to use an analogy like a grind you know like a millstone when it grinds mm. it grinds it grinds it, it creates sparks right yeah the sparks that come out of it and if it flies it's they're rubbing against it flies again i be is high yeah. okay yeah. lifted uh, the sparks are lifted lost the space seriously, yeah. seriously though <laughs> what some people would do is they'll look at those sparks and start chasing the sparks they think that's oh. what they start trying to catch sparks you can't catch the spark you catch it it's, it's dead what you should mm. learn to do is turn the millstone that is deep to generate a lot of sparks so there's all friction what i'm trying to say is friction is not a bad thing it's not a bad thing it's good a lot of good things can come out of it if you manage it well if you manage it well exactly which 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 brings me to the why haven't you collaborated with one of these new afrobeat artists from nigeria 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 we're doing so well i know that one or two might have approached me in the past night not sure i can't remember if i ever mentioned it to you but why i mean if you've been a veteran in the game you i know your music is slightly different to what they 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 do most of the time but there's some pretty good ones out there that are that a similar to what you do. Yes. Well, in things that's from 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 the Nigerian side of things. I mean, if I think about Two-Face, someone like Two-Face. He's he he sings, you know, he doesn't he doesn't sing all the other ones that <laughs> Yeah. Well, I suppose well, in a way there the the answer is in the question. I suppose <laughs> some part of that is is the answer right there. Like what you said in terms of the type of music. I love don't get me wrong, I mean I love Yeah. Love Afrobeat. I mean, the original Afrobeat. I really love the Afrobeat. Ah, ah, ah. stuff. Absolutely. And but you know, I've there's some Nigerian artists out there that I do like. That I would, give me three of your like, top ones. Well, I like Sha, for instance. Okay, that's understandable. She, yeah, I like her stuff. I've well, some of the ones that I really like that are not they're not necessarily modern stuff. I I love Ebenezer Obi. I oh, always love what a stuff. guy. Yeah, and and I think when I was a kid, you know, you were surrounded by a lot of that stuff, but you yes. probably didn't appreciate it as much. Yeah. But then, as the years pass, you you listen back to some of that stuff, and you think, oh my god, that the melodies almost. I like was both. about to ask you that. Like, what about it? And was that was what I thought about? Like, I love the melody. I still melody. I have. I love the melody sometimes. Oh, I, I can't yeah. remember most of it because mm-hmm. I was all that was it was Fellami I was listening to. Ah, like, yeah, like, like Sonny Ebenezer would be like, that's Sonny yes. Ebenezer. Eddie Rinko, hey, to fair 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 to
It's married <laughs> to sort of like really beautiful words. It, it ties so, to your poetic thing. You know, I don't know that um, sang on about kete kete. Yeah, 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 no, yeah, 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 or oh, yeah. I mean, I'm sure there are. I, mean, I, mean, I don't know. I, 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 let me give you an example. One of yeah. someone I think that is absolutely brilliant right right now, Burner Boy. I think he's he's fantastic. You, might, I mean, I, I don't I don't see how. But I think he's very versatile. I mean, he's done work with Ed Sheeran. He's done work with Stormzy. He's, I, he's, he's, I mean, a lot of the a lot of the um, what I like about some of the Burner Boys. And it's very like it's very like fella. Sorry, that means exactly. Funny. That's for me. That's that's like, that's, that's, and, that, that's and, exactly uh, where. I'm. Yes, and I, and I understand that actually his history is 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 connected to that. Yes, uh, yes, yeah. So, there's there, there's a there's a history there. Yes, yeah, yes. So that's probably why. But yeah, I mean, you know, that's some of that stuff. It's you know the interesting thing about like, um, and I've mentioned this before. I'm sure we've had this conversation before in the past about the Afrobeat stuff. Is you know because music is a funny thing. It's like it evolves, it grows, it changes, right? So at the moment, like you said, Afrobeat is everybody, wherever you go, wherever you look, there's a sort of flavor of Afrobeat that's kind of, it's kind of just permeated the whole music scene, the music industry. And, and that's a great thing. I, I love it. But at the same time, sometimes I think to myself, you do, ha I mean, there's nothing you can do about it because that, that's actually how music evolves. You know, if you think about it, you know, rock and roll really comes from the sort of like the bluesy angle of, of things that happened in the past. So one thing kind of like a chain, they look link into each other and it evolves and becomes something else. And what ends up happening is that all these little or different genres get absorbed into what you think is music of today because it's whatever happened 10, 20 years ago, slowly becomes absorbed and becomes part of the music today. And this is the thing that potentially will happen with Afrobeat. And that's one thing that we do have to be careful, careful. about. Yeah. I mean, it, don't get me wrong, you, you can't actually avoid it, because I think that's just what happens. But I think sometimes, this is why, like, I, I, I really... I mean, you tell me, I, I don't know, but I'm sure there's a lot of that sort of stuff out there. But what I really would love to hear is Afrobeat stuff, Af Afrobeat music that has something that's timeless about it. And what I mean by that is like the songs are timeless. I don't just want to hear Afrobeat that's just talking about the girl's backside and all this sort of stuff. Yeah, because the, yeah. prob the problem with all of that is it's, it can be cool right now and catchy because it's all about the club and dancing and stuff. Mm -hmm. What happens is with trends, trends, they flip over very quickly. They change. Yeah. So before you know what's happening, it's like to be talk, you know, talking about that sort of stuff tomorrow is going to be out of date and then it goes. Yeah, I mean, come it, up with it. Like a, like, with, yeah. Hang on, let me just finish. If it's married to... to just like we were talking about Ebenezer Obey then. If yeah. It's married to something that's saying something substantial. And it's still entertaining. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying it has to be heavy. It's still entertaining. Yeah, like Tupac. It's still be entertaining. Yeah. But have something that is being said that, that can stand the test of time. Of time, and, yeah. and what you'll find is that, that that genre of music, Afrobeat, will still always, there'll be a part of it that will still always be ours. will still always be African. Just yeah. like Fela's sound is always going to be Fela. Even yeah. if you hear, if you hear the the um, the American army band playing a fella yeah. tune, you'd still know you it's know. a fella tune. It, yeah. it will never, it will never become an American army band tune. Yeah, it will, sure. just, it will, it will yeah. always be. And I think that's the danger with when things are just always about trends. Oh, you steal my girl, I steal your girl. Shake your bum, I shake. You know what I mean? And all these sort of themes that run through a lot of. Afrobeat. I think a lot of people still enjoy it. A lot of people are still enjoying that. I mean, a lot of people are still enjoying that. What I'm saying, listen. I don't think you're going to go to a club after a few bottles and be able to understand what. Oh, yeah, here is the beat. 
and seeing what is around you. I, I'm, I'm, I'm just I'm, 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 I, I just enjoy. I, what I'm saying is, and I agree. I enjoy it as well. If I go to club, I enjoy yeah. hearing. Oh, you still go to club? What I'm saying is that you still go to clubs. We should. Well, I haven't been in, in a while, but like uh, I, I wouldn't have know. thought so. <laughs> when, when, I, when I was in Singapore, I did. You know. Oh, so, okay. And, hey, you were working. What I'm saying is like, even in Singapore, you hear you hear Afrobeat. Yeah. So, what I'm saying is, you know, our stuff, Afrobeat is a genre of music can 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 step out of the clubs. It can be yes, lo- it and it should be able to. Yes, yes. Yeah. And it should be able to. So, let's. Uh, while we're a couple of questions before we wrap this up. What's um, what's up next with you? Um. Well, everybody's waiting to see when they're going to unlock the <laughs> the lockdown. Yeah. Um, a lot of things that we would have been doing this year. There's some festival things that we sh- were supposed to be doing. We talked about the South Africa thing as well. All of that has been sort of like rescheduled for next year. Right. So really, that's, that's, I mean, unless something changes and something else comes up this year, I know what I know is happening is, is that we've got some gigs, gigs coming up next year. So okay. between now and then, I think the music industry as a whole is on a serious sort of like, the dimmer switch has been turned down a bit. Yeah, yeah. So people, and how do you how do you think this is going to change? You think it's going to because this is the, the, interestingly before we wrap this up. Uh, uh, do you is um, your your industry much like the aviation industry, much like mm. the um, um, restaurant industry? These are in, this this is spaces where people have to be together. Large groups of people have to be in contact or relatively not in contact, but relatively near each other. How yeah. do you think this is going to do you think this is going to affect you guys? I mean, I'm sure there's going to be a vaccine at some point. So that, yeah, that you know. Well, that might be the thing that would, will, will, will sort of change everything back to where we know the music industry has been heading for, you know, the past few years, which yeah. is live music. Yeah. Mm. You know, I mean, nowadays you make a record and really you just make the record so that you can go and, do Tour. more live shows. Yeah. 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 A lot of the record stores that used to exist on the high street don't exist anymore. Absolutely. So yeah. it, it's the live it's the live situation that's the mainstay of the music industry. And this situation right now with COVID nineteen is mm. kind of it's really just upset the apple cart a bit. I know people do things from home and what have you, but it's just never the same. It's not the no, same. No, it's not. No, it's not. It's going to a, a I mean, well, uh, Yeah, it's not. It's in every in every part of the industry, I mean, in every, in every sector of the, of the of the economy, if you think about it, even what we are doing, it's, 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 it will rather be, um, some things are rather, be, uh, they're, rather they're, they're better in, 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 in physical, in the physical space rather than a digital space. Yeah. Um, you know, so it's, especially when it comes to the social side of things, I mean, yes, people are seeing us, but I mean, we kind of have talked about it. We, you know, we can't wait till this opens up so that we can be back on the same, yeah. you know, same thing with you. You can't, you might, you might do all what you're doing, but you really want to see, you, want, you feel the vibe when you're on stage oh. watching people and that, Absolutely. and, and yeah. that, and, and you absorb that and, and you return that energy to people. Now, this yeah. is so digital, is the only person that is, that is feeling any vibe is. Logitech, <laughs> camera. <laughs> and, and it's not. So, yeah. so to, to end this, I had I was thinking of like some fire stump questions, like a single answer. If you can give us that, okay. Should we try it? Okay. Let's try it. I, I might fail woefully, but let's, yeah. <laughs> it's not no so joke. bad. <laughs> What's your favorite instrument to play? Piano, I think. Okay. What's your favorite single? From all your songs, like what's the one single that you like? The single that I that I from yeah. everything that I've done. Yes. So I would say that includes both Lyle's family and my own yes. stuff. Yes. There's, there's a song called Well, can I pick two? Okay. I, I was gonna say that, yeah. Pick three, <laughs> actually. Let, let's 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 give you a pass and you pick three. Okay. Okay, all right, okay. First one is a song called Um I've Never Walked Alone. And it was on my first solo album. Yeah. Okay. Um, Inspired by? It was, it's, it's, uh, strange oh, enough, that dream, no, it, well, it came in a dream. I had a dream. Ah, Tunde. And in this dream, I heard yeah. this. Hey. Ah, Tunde. Ah. Seriously, I swear to God. And and I you, thank God, thank God you don't drink or smoke, oh. 
If you drank I mean, alcohol, you smoke now, you'll be... <laughs> you'll not be you, easy, let, <laughs> let me tell you what happened. It was in the day... You know you used to have dictaphones where you... Yeah, nowadays, yeah. you can put into your phone. Yeah. I used to have a dictaphone next to my... Because we used to use them to record quick yeah. ideas. And this night, I went to sleep at home in Newcastle. And I had this dream, a very vivid dream. And I remember the chorus of this particular song and the words. And I remember I woke up and I was lucky to have my dictaphone just next to me. And I picked it up and sang the melody and the, the few words that I remember of the song. And that was that song called I've Never Walked Alone. And it's really beautiful a song. spiritual song. Abs absolutely it's beautiful song, yeah. So there's that song. Second song I'll pick, I've, because it just started us off, it got us our record deal. It means so much to us. Ocean Drive. Ocean Drive. Absolutely. Ocean Drive. Third song I'll pick is a song that I recorded on my second solo record. And I made this record like 2011, I think. 2011. There's a song on there called... We are all in this together. And I find it mm, so pertinent yeah. to, to what's happening right mm. now with the COVID uh, situation. So, I, I mean, I'd encourage people just, I think you use one of my songs. No, yes, thank you very much. We have yes. to, we should say thank you. Uh, Move is, is our signature yeah. tune, yeah. And um, on your on your second album, and that was yeah. called, um, what's your second album again? Your Diamonds in the Rock. Album. Diamonds in the Rock. The first yeah. one was called, the first solo album was called what? Tunde, it was just called Tunde. Tunde, okay. The second yeah. solo album, Diamond in the Rock. Yeah, that's that. That's the. Where was the single "Letting Me Down Gently"? Oh, that was on the Tunde. Tunde. Yeah, yeah. That was that's my, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, line. I got a couple more questions. Well, maybe. Okay. If not music, what? Only God knows. A hey, herbalist. A hey, herbalist. Yeah, maybe I'll be definitely. A hey, herbalist. If you watch a Nollywood, if you watch a Nollywood movie, he would have fitted all those herbalists. No, no. Yeah. <laughs> definitely. Forget about oh, that. Yeah. You should ask me. I will tell you. Know, you. you let, can I tell you something really okay. interesting about that? This is strange because this just happened today. So our gardener came today. He was, you know, just he had to do some stuff and you know, mow the lawn and what have you. And, he, and so I was with him chatting about some stuff. He says, oh, you plant things. And I says, yeah. And then he picks this. Just, it looked like nothing. He says, oh, do you know what this is? He picked this, like, little plant. And he says, oh, rub that on your hands and, like, and smell it. He said, I smelled it. And it smelled like it had this beautiful smell. It smelled like, almost like a eucalyptus, like a mentholy smell. Really, really nice. Minty, yeah. Yeah, minty. He said it's called fever fuel. It's a plant called fever fruit. I'd, I'd, I'd heard of fever fruit ah, before. I didn't know today. that's what it smelled like. <laughs> so you're right. If not music, maybe I would have been interested in plants. <laughs> okay. <laughs> plants and herbs in a, in, a, in, a, in a positive way. You know. Yeah, I know. So where do you go to get inspired? I think inspiration is one of those fickle mistresses that... You you you've got to always be open and prepared and ready for it. Okay. So you I'm always writing in my journal, and sometimes that will inspire. Well, going with that question like, always, I, I, after all this is answered, yeah, do you think any? Do you think some of that is inspired in sleep? <laughs> Most people are inspired when they are awake. <laughs> He yeah, gets his own inspiration when he's sleeping. Look, this guy is straight. I've told you when I when I go to his place and he prepares coffee, or I have to think twice. Watch. Why? What do I know is inside? Where do Eat I know? Up. Eat I don't know. <laughs> if, he, if he tells you, and then I'll tell you that he wants to with prepare... With hydrated water. <laughs> he, he, wants to prepare, he wants to prepare coffee with you and he wants to spray something inside. I said, look, if you spray anything other than pure <laughs> sugar for me, <laughs> I'm going it's to not, fight. It's not that bad. Don't listen to me. I know, I know, I know it's exaggerated. I know, I know, I know. And the last question, who's your musical mentor? I mean, what sparked this idea of you going into music? I mean, like, I mean, loving music. Do you have a mentor? Uh, well, I wouldn't say so much. Or inspiration that, because, you know. Uh, yeah, but I would say, I'll tell you who. James Taylor. Ah, James God. Taylor. Because I when I, I as a kid yeah. growing up in Nigeria, I don't know how well, that happened. But Now, please, can you explain to the, can you, sorry, Femme, today, please. Can you just explain to people that are normal? I, why does I always cut that you is, That is not James you. Taylor of Kula and the Gang. <laughs> <laughs> because you are you, your own James Taylor is James Taylor Quartet, isn't it? Yes, J no, uh -huh. James Taylor that sang Carolina. Yes, now. Yes. Yes. yes, yes, 
And that particular song, Carolina in My Mind, I remember I used to hear it on the radio a lot when I was a kid growing up in Nigeria. Mm. And when I heard Ocean Drive, it reminded me of that song. I wow. remember I used to think, oh man, I wish if I was a, a songwriter, that's the type of song I would like to write. So James Taylor, definitely. Okay. Well, obviously, I like Fela Kuti and stuff, but James Taylor, without a doubt, timeless, timeless stuff. Brilliant. Timeless. Thank, Thank you, you very much so today. Much. This we've taken your time. <laughs> I know it's been, been so much fun. <laughs> a lot, there's, there's a lot more that you've said here that a lot of people you probably not, you know, especially our audience, which probably be mainly, well, hopefully, Af a lot of Africans. We have some people that are not Africans, but I think people want to 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 understand um, a lot more about you. So thank you for uh, sharing this time with sp and space with us, and and thanks for letting us get high tonight with your ins inspired words. Yeah, um, you. you have anything else to say? To me? No, thank you, thank you, thank you. I hope to see you. I hope we'll be able to do this live and in person, and you know, get into more things. So, if you have any questions you would want to ask Tindebayo, yeah. please let us know. We may have another opportunity of having him live, or yeah. maybe when he calls me on one of his stores, I can ask for you. You know, I never can tell. So, okay, brilliant. Thank you very much, and goodbye. F and until the next video, take thank care. Thank you. Bye -bye. All right, bye bye. Pleasure. Take care. Stay safe. I will, Everyone. and you too. Yeah. Bye.